It's all I ever wanted for as long as I can remember. I want to do what you do. I want to be just like you. I'm not my dad. Cecil thinks you're on our side. I'm not so sure. I'm not my dad. Is Mark becoming his father? Is Mark the bad guy? Is he a threat? Season 2 focuses so heavily on this question. Let's talk about it. Season 2 really is that good. The break between cores kills. It hurt and sucked. We all know this. I wanted to start by getting this out of the way and by saying, I told you so to all those comments on my last video on Invincible saying, oh, it's gonna come back early gen. Well, now who looks silly? Yet now that it's all out of the way, we can forget about the break. This is just the fucking show, man. Core 2 is episode after episode of straight bangers. The finale, while not as hot as last season's, honestly, how can you beat the 1v1? That would be hard to top. Season 2 caps off everything with such a huge bang. Before we deep dive into this finale, just want to remind you guys that we have a ton of absolutely awesome content to come out soon. So to make sure to subscribe to the channel with the notification bell turned on, just past 7k, and also to check out the description down below, we've got our Patreon links down there and the link to our Discord. The first chunk of this episode is so fun, but also insanely tense. Before that, however, we finally get Josh Keaton voicing a character of man on the street. I love seeing him return, but man, this sucks. I was just so set on him voicing Spider-Man, but damn, I was so- HOLY SHIT! For real though, this entire sequence was so damn fun. Just, the discourse around it has been kind of miserable. Yes, technically, it wasn't Peter, and we didn't get the whole side plot with the Avengers. But this was straight fire, and Josh does a great job in his second time voicing a spider-like character who is in a different universe that isn't Peter Parker. This works perfectly for what it was. We all know what it's referencing. It doesn't need to be anymore. Though, it would have been pretty cool, hey? Before jumping into the more serious stuff about this scene and getting into the meat and bones of this discussion, a uh, Fortnite gun. No breakdown, Fortnite is canon. And Batman! This is sick. I can't actually believe this is here. Just some fun shit. So this part, I wanted to separate from all the jokes. Mark, as a protagonist, is just becoming one of the most engaging characters just in fiction at the moment. His struggles and pains, it's one of the most defining superhero stories I have ever seen. When the show first started, I feel as if most of the conversation was around the commentary the show was doing, or what people thought it was doing, rather than the actual construction of its own narrative. So much TV, or just everything these past two decades, has been around the word deconstruction. Mark stands tall as opposed to this ideology, an ideology of cynicism. This entire season has been constructed around the simple premise, is Mark dangerous? Is Mark going to be, no, is Mark just like his father? Everyone makes it out to be that he's some killer, some precarious, delicate, fragile thing. Mark tries so hard, so damn hard to prove that he is everything that his father wasn't, human. In an intense duel, Levy holds Mark's mother and brother hostage. The trolley problem arises. The thought experiment that everyone should know by this point. It's a staple of the superhero genre. The thought experiment where our main character is presented with a very difficult choice. A trolley is on a track and he's certain to kill five people. In this case, it's two, his mother and his brother. And to save them, all you need to do is to pull that lever which would divert the trolley to a different track, where now it only kills one. Most often the case, pulling said lever not only makes you killer, but provides the antagonist ample evidence that their ideology that goes against the protagonist is true. What will your protagonist do? It defines character. Another term for it which a famous director has used is a no-win scenario. Heroes find a way. There is always a way to cheat your way out. And if there isn't, Mark pulls the lever. The difference here is to compare to Zack Snyder's really poor attempt at explaining The Dark Knight Returns is the sense of cynicism. The sense of whether was this the right choice? The entire season builds the narrative of what does it mean to be a hero? To take shortcuts? Is it to protect loved ones? To stop bad guys? To kill them? 
Angstrom Levy is a really interesting antagonist in that he is more or less a non-existent character. His motives, powers, everything is 101 bad guy shit. Perfect. Love that. Yet, where is he? Where was he? A normal seasonal bad guy like this takes up most of the B or C plot. I've watched enough of Arrow and Flash. What is this? If not for the entire season being Levy's argument, the opposing force which makes for such a compelling showdown. This isn't two long rivals who are destined to fight. This isn't your dad turning on you. This isn't a mentor or a friend that you looked up to becoming the villain or a remnant of your home, your history, your people coming back as an immovable freight train destined to destroy humanity. This is just... You're that guy. Where I don't think most of Hollywood or Zack Snyder for that matter understand Kobayashi Maru, Invincible does. Mark is really affected by this. Mark bursts into the scene and he tries to de-escalate. I know he tries, he knows he tried, yet... Oh, I agree. See, here is his first mistake. And I know he's a teenager. His mom and brother were violently thrown to the ground. And he tries his hardest to do a Superman from BBS. This attempt fails leaving him now in another dimension with T-Rexes that want to eat him. It's also worth noting Clark didn't actually kill the guy in this clip. So it makes me wonder if this exact paneling is in the book or whether or not this is a direct comment on that scene. It's worth noting and worth looking into in the future down the track. Nonetheless, he then says, If you hurt him, I swear I'll feel what? Bam. Mistake two. The fight just ramps up in intensity. At different times, Mark tries to calm things down, bringing up great points to no initial response. The good man Levy was before is still in there, but as Levy's heavy PTSD becomes more and more intense, that glimmer of hope, the light for a peaceful resolution looks awfully dark and tough to see. Levy announces his strength, like many villains do, right? Invincible has seen this before. Times where Spider-Man is on the ropes or some bad guy finds a way to hurt Supes. Then our hero, while still needing to hold back, beats up the bad guy. Mark, however, takes this as a sign to let loose a little. This man announces- This doesn't end until you and your family are dead. It sounds Stop. a bit like- Never. Mark's first punch lands. It sends Levy flying. This ends the fight, or it should have. The second and third blow was personal. Mark is gone. He is going for the kill. After Mark's first proper punch, Levy doesn't even compete. Now, in the same position as he once was, he continues to beat, pulverize, atomize this Man, this poor human soul is crushed beneath the fists of a Viltramite. Levy has one last attempt to get his arm out to stop the onslaught, but it's too... <laughs> and where other stories would have this moment of triumph, or at least try to humanize it somehow. Cecil plays this angle, and normally a hero is getting out. I love how Invincible tackles this. You're not your dad, Mark. You weren't there. He doesn't get an out. This changed Mark forever. Whatever the future holds for him, I look forward to it because the events in his life like this have a genuine effect. This is the modern showcase of what it means to kill. Why heroes don't kill. People act as if it's the righteous thing to do. And if you have that power, then it's a responsibility for you to do it. It makes me sick. And now we have Mark as the perfect retort as to what it means to take a life. The reasoning one must do to find it acceptable. After so many years of waiting for this season and the huge break, the epilogue was something so damn cathartic. We get our pure amazing Spider-Man 2 moment where he looks at his love interest, wanting to live that life of being normal, to love, to be with her, knowing he can't. We have seen Mark struggle against every foe, for his name to be the butt of every joke. To now, Mark flying through the sky, to have this be a direct counter to his flight that opens the season. How much growth has this character gone in the past eight episodes? It's just insane. All to come to the question, is Mark like his father? So much so to potentially become a threat. Maybe, yeah. The future of Invincible is so 
damn exciting. We have this Moon Knight thing that's going on. I have no idea what this is. That's neat. Along with Nolan and Alan setting up an escape plan and Nolan missing his wife? To quote a friend, I love that Nolan might be getting some sort of redemption or atonement for the sins of Chicago, but to come from a place of yearning for his wife was not an angle I had expected. For now, that leaves us with The Wait. The Wait for season three. They promised us it wouldn't be as long as the wait between seasons one and two. So, yeah, we wait. Waiting. Yep. Ah, oh, fuck it. I'm just gonna buy these damn books and read it. Read my books, Mark. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I promise you we've got a ton of stuff cooking behind the scenes. Down below, along with knowing what your thoughts were on Invincible Season 2, I want to know what you guys want to see from me and the boys here on the channel. I know I've been covering different anime, DC stuff, Rick and Morty, just shit like that. But I want to know what you guys specifically want to see. Make sure to join the Discord too to get a direct line with me if you have stuff to ask or want to tell me. I just want to hear more from you guys. Other than that, I just want to thank my patrons. In the Great May tier, we have Colin, CJ, and Nick. And for the Good May tier, we have Jadu Sable. If seeing your name here at the end of videos or hearing your name be called out along with other great perks interests you, please make sure to follow the link in the description down below. You get to see videos early among other great things. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and the notification bell turned on and I will see you guys next time.